So, my question for you guys this week is an emotional topic for me, one that's very near and dear to my heart. How much are you going to miss plastic bags when they're fully outlawed? And I'm specifically referring to like the co op and Northmart Sobeys t shirt bags, mm -hmm. which are just brilliant, like the, a, a, a total like paradigm of engineering, in my opinion. Welcome to your last podcast, the last podcast in the game, but the first you should listen to. I'm your host, Colton Simpson, and with me this week, he's our resident audiophile, William Ham Clark. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> and always in my corner, it's the amazing Grace Tadigan. Hello, hello. And last but certainly not least, it's Mr. Listen himself, Josh Fay. What do you add? So what is your last podcast? We're a conversational podcast where every week each of us brings a topic of conversation to argue amongst ourselves and talk it out for your amusement. If you like that, be sure to subscribe to the podcast feed to never miss a new episode. If you're watching on YouTube, leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And if you're feeling generous or have a couple of bucks to toss our way, you can always head on over to patreon.com slash your last podcast and help support the show. So with that out of the way, uh, Josh, yes, what's your topic? Okay, so my topic this week is one that's very near and dear to my heart. It's an emotional topic for me. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you're having a good day, you might want to click it off now or you might want to listen in even more because... <laughs> There's a big change coming here in Newfoundland, Labrador. It's already taken place in our hometown, and it's got me kind of upset on an emotional level. So my question for you guys this week is, how much are you going to miss plastic bags when they're fully outlawed? And I'm specifically referring to like the co-op and Northmart Sobeys t-shirt bags, mm -hmm. which are just brilliant, like the, a, a, a total like paradigm of engineering, in my opinion. So, like, how do we feel about this, the banning of plastic bags? I'm going to throw it to an ally first, because I know he's on my side. So, <laughs> yeah. so, Colton, like, what are we doing about this fucking travesty? I don't know what we're going to do, because I'm going to miss plastic bags quite a lot. Like, when we use plastic bags, uh, obviously, whenever I go to the grocery store, I always pick up the groceries. Oops. But I, then I use them as garbage bags. Yep. You know, we use them as a counterweight to string up a light on the set. So, Oh, yes. So... Uh, without plastic bags, we're going to have to come up with a lot of other ways to figure out how to fulfill all these roles. And certain plastic bags, like garbage bags, they're not going to be outlawed from what I understand, right? Like, for, Well, for now. For now. For now. But who knows in the future. When, when I was opening Pandora's box. Yeah. If you start banning plastic bags, where does it end? I mean, there's nothing really that wrong with plastic. We just have it in our head that is unsightly to see. Right, you well, know what no, I mean? No, it's also a huge <laughs> problem for the environment. But it comes from the environment. No, uh, no, no. <laughs> it's a petroleum that's not, product. That's not exactly Listen, the way it works. I don't even I, like, like I don't even know I'm home when I go back to Goose Bay until I see at least one co-op bag caught in a spruce bow <laughs> waving in the wind. Like oh, that is geez. the international symbol. That's the unofficial Labrador flag. <laughs> it is, yeah, especially if you've got a bit of green on it. Yeah, or something, it's perfect. Right? But the thing is, to me, is. I don't necessarily think that plastic bags are a problem. What I think is a problem is how we manage our garbage and how we recycle in general. Because I, I have yet to hear a good argument as to why we can't just recycle plastic bags themselves. We're getting better at recycling, you know, nail water bottles and stuff like that. It's a pain in the arse here in St. John's, but we're getting better at it. So why can't we recycle the plastic bags? Yeah. So when I was looking into why we can't recycle the plastic bags... I had to look into something just because it is the emotional attachment just to using plastic bags oh, all the time, good, growing man. up with them. But whenever I got down to it, the reason was always like monetary. It was always yes. financial. It's, it was like they're hard to gather because they blow away in the wind. Yeah. I'm like, can't we come up with a way to kind of strap these plastic bags down like in the back of a truck or like in a garbage truck? Or, you know, maybe we have to put them in. Well, this is kind of redundant, but put them in other plastic bags to throw it on the curb or something. Yeah, right? Like, and, and so another problem, just to capitalize on what you said there, yeah. then another problem that I read from a monetary point of view was that there was like the law of diminishing returns that existed with almost all types of recycling up until the early double O's where you have to add so many new materials when you're recycling and melting down in that process that it's like okay we're only actually recycling 10 to 15 percent mm. of the water bottle to make a new water bottle for example but they've gotten pretty good at actually getting that number up higher like there is no plastic right now that's recycled without having some new mm. material added in the fabrication process so if we could iron that out Rather than coming up with these blanketing laws, let's just focus on the technology and recycle the plastic bags. Look at beer bottles. Every beer bottle you drink 
has probably about 12 bumps on the ass end of it to indicate it's been drunk out of 12 times, right? Mm-hmm. So, Is that what those bumps mean? They are. I yeah. didn't know that. Yep. Yeah. So everyone from Newfoundland knows that, right? <laughs> <laughs> Every single person here knows that. But it's like, yeah, we got really good at beer bottles, so why can't we do that with Sobey's bags? So coming away from my allies and coming to my enemies, Grace, what are your thoughts on plastic bags? I am going to miss them not at all. <laughs> I never, ever use plastic bags. Okay, so what do you use? Almost never. I use reusable bags for the grocery store. What are they Um, made out of? Canvas, usually. Okay. Um, I do have a couple that I have ended up with, the ones that you can buy at Sobeys that are made from partly recycled plastic. Mm -hmm. I do own some of those, uh, but for the most part, they're canvas bags. I actually prefer those because they pack down a lot smaller anyways. Mm -hmm. Um, And I almost always have one in my purse or in the car. And if I don't, have one of them oftentimes i'll just carry it out like say i have to go buy a shower curtain if i'm just buying a shower curtain i will not take a plastic bag i will hold the shower curtain in my hand because i don't see any advantage to taking a shower curtain putting it in a bag holding the bag it's not like i have to juggle 15 things Mm -hmm. there's no benefit to putting it in a bag um in terms of like garbage bags within my house um most of the time all of my garbage uh my little individual bins that happen in the you know, their own rooms, they'll have one bag in them that has been there for, I don't know, months. And I just dump them out into my big garbage bin. I mean, like you said, putting bags in bags, you don't really need to because you can just pour it in there as long as you're tying it up. Obviously, we will always have the need for some single use plastics. um, But I think reducing as much of it as we can, like, why not? There's no disadvantage to, you know, it's reduce, reuse, recycle. So if we can reduce you know, like you said, recycle isn't perfect. Reuse, yeah, when you're talking about, oh, you know, I use it for this, I use it for that, that's fantastic. As long as you're using it over again, I have less of a problem with it. But I think the thing is, most people don't reuse it. Mm-hmm. They take their, you know, shower curtain that they buy, they put it in a plastic bag, they come home, they throw the plastic bag out. What was the benefit to using the plastic Which, bag Which, once again, comes back from, like, is the problem the bag, or is it just our, like, disposable society. Like, oh, I think that's... there's nothing wrong with a plastic bag. I think if we could find a way to repurpose them, recycle them, get them back into the system again, it'd be deadly. But to outlaw them, I'm afraid of it for a couple of reasons, but I just want to try to chime Ham in here for a second, because I do know you do use some plastic bags. I do use some plastic bags. And um, you can offer the perspective of working in retail, giving out plastic bags, too. Yeah, but I take out way too many plastic bags. And... There's so many of them that are shitty. So they'll just like the quality of the bag. The quality of the The bag. The Sobeys bag is far more like oily and resistant to like rips and tears than like the garbage Nortmar bags. So Sobeys got it down, but like Marie's is slacking though. Oh, yeah. Just change theirs actually. You know how you can tell you know how you can tell a good plastic bag? You should be able to take the bag, scrunch it up. And, and be able to like sort of shake it out and not have that noise. That's how you know. You can take a Sobeys bag, scrunch it up, and unfold it, and you will barely see any seams on it. Whereas if you take a Marie's or like a co-op bag and scrunch it up, it'll look like a golf ball. It'll be, have all yeah. these little bumps and lumps all over it. Low quality garbage. Needs to maintain the highest standard for our t-shirt bags. No, but um, in terms of like um, me like using them for groceries, like... I use them here now, yeah, but when I was living on my own and had to take public transit, like, they're useless. Um, I think they'd be more useful. No, they, they, they fall apart on your way over on the pissy metro bus ride back to your apartment. You got a double bag. See, <laughs> but, see that's just using more bags, and then the cashier at Sobeys just like... <sighs> And they like they already can't pack up your stuff right as is. So another defense for the plastic bags in terms of packing stuff up. Ever watch anyone play grocery Tetris with those reusable bags that you like, Grace? It's infuriating. Yeah. Because while the cashier might be fine with someone, you know, arsing around with a dozen eggs and a liter of orange juice trying to drop it in together like a Tetris game, the eight people waiting in line are just like ready to kill that old lady oh, that yeah. brought the reusable bags. I hate that shit. It it's, drives me. I mean, and I, I'm so afraid to go to Sobeys now because I'm going to have a nuclear meltdown when I got to wait for like five years in line because everyone's playing grocery Tetris now. What if the new reusable bags become the new plastic bags whereas when we're uh <laughs> making so many like right now i think there's only six billion in circulation in the u.s or sent over here but when we're talking about tens of billions of these bags 
the price for consumers to purchase them are going to get lower and lower yes. and lower. They're not going to be like $3 bags anymore. They might wind up being a quarter. A quarter is still a bit for like most people to just throw away. Mm -hmm. But it could get to a point where we're just throwing away all these reusable bags as well, just like plastic bags. And now they're even like more of a nuisance. Just when you have these reusable bags, remembering to bring them to the grocery store. Yes, I remember Ham saying, oh, let's try to use more reusable bags. But I don't remember to bring them and he doesn't no. remember to bring them half the time. So then like <laughs> we're just using plastic and whatnot anyways. So at the grocery store, if we just have to keep purchasing all these reusable bags it's over and over boy. again. Yeah. No, yeah. No, like, no. I just gotta <laughs> I just gotta come up with a very, you know, even point here. Go ahead. We might be getting rid of them, but there's enough of them floating around St. John's so we could scavenge them up. Have plastic bags for years. Oh, that's true. I mean, we could probably put together a parachute and float the island away. There's not many plastic <laughs> oh, bags yeah. around. Yes. I mean, I don't remember the last time I got a plastic bag at a store, but I still have a drawer full of them mm. from people br bring something to my house. They've got a plastic bag or a roommate picks something up and it happens to be in a plastic bag. I have still got them and I use them when I need them, but most of the mm. time I don't need them. It's it's once again, I, I think the government is trying to crack down on, you know, environment, climate change and yada, yada, so on and so forth. But it's just, you know, you got to you got to hit the bullseye with these types of initiatives. And what is the purpose of banning a half a million people in Newfoundland from having something to put their eggs and, and their jars of peanut butter in at the grocery store when you got China over there dumping billions and billions of tons of coal into the atmosphere on a daily basis and firing tires in the ocean like popping quarters in a wishing well? It just doesn't make sense from an environmental point of view. Oh, yeah. There's tons of, uh, you know, there's tons of ways in which, you know, humanity as a whole can change what they're doing. I think that the mentality is, is we can't force people to uh, reuse. We can't force people to recycle. Even if we, we come up with the technology to make recycling more effective, like you mentioned, mm -hmm. I think that's absolutely a, a good place to put our money and efforts. But then you have to rely on people to recycle the bags appropriately. That's I was jobs. talking to you <laughs> the other day, Colton, you said you can't recycle paper. Mm. You didn't know you could recycle paper. Like that's that's a big deal. Like if you don't know that you can't recycle paper, then we can't encourage you. I mean, yes, we can put out advertising campaigns well, and yeah, educate people. I was going to say like the campaigns around here, like I don't see anybody recycling paper in terms of like from the printer, putting it yes. into bags. And, ra and here, rather than right? coming out with sweeping legislation to mm -hmm. say no more plastic bags, why don't we come up with legislation that says, okay, we're going to take all the money that we spent in the drafting legislation to ban the bags and we're going to improve the garbage collection Make it simple to recycle. It is not simple to recycle here. Yeah, the thing is, and it's like, even worse outside of here. It's yeah, not it compared to like you come from Montreal, where literally everything is divided up into like mm -hmm. composting and glass and mm -hmm. plastic, which like, is not that simple, really. No, and we didn't grow up with that. We yeah. weren't brought up from that. Literally, when I grew up, everything was garbage. Yeah, everything. Yep. Everything's burned. The only the reason yep. you would recycle is so you can collect cans for half mm -hmm. a year and then get like thirty bucks back from Rogers Recycling. That's mm -hmm. the only reason School you'd benefits, recycle. Uh, fundraising was what recycling was essentially associated with yeah so which, like we didn't grow up with recycling different things so yeah when i'm like oh you don't recycle paper mm -hmm. like you know in terms of like printer paper i wasn't brought up with that at all no mm -hmm. right so there's other things too with in terms of recycling is that when it was shown that people were charged more for plastic bags the use of plastic bags went down by 40 percent mm -hmm. yeah so why not just charge more for plastic bags charge like instead of five cents ten cents or whatever yep. there you go certain people are going to stop using plastic bags just because of the extra charge so I don't know if we have to and then take that money and reinvest into recycling and to try technology. and figure things out. Yeah, it's the idea behind the carbon tax is very similar. But yeah, yeah. and ahead. I and I understand like the ecological impact. I think it's a hundred thousand whales, seals, and dolphins or something die a year because of plastic bags. And in India, I think it was twenty cows a day die because <laughs> of plastic Gosh. bags, yeah. which is pretty staggering. So don't get me wrong. There's obviously ecological impacts <laughs> that we don't know over here. Like, I don't see cows falling over in the fields right, here. Saw the of these bags. <laughs> yeah, I don't see it here. So, yes, obviously, there's things that are easy to ignore. But I just think the convenience factor of a plastic bag, I'm not going to be able to get it with the reusable bags. There's going to be dozens of times I wind up at the grocery store. I'm like, oh, shit, I'm already in here. I left it out in my car. Would have been nice to just group well, everything in a plastic bag. When you go up to Costco, they oh, never did have nuisance. bags. You got to arse around with old Kellogg's Corn Flakes boxes <laughs> trying to scab together a means to get this from here to the truck, right? And mm -hmm. it was just, it's a pain in the ass. And I understand for someone like Grace who did grow up with a lot of this stuff and was educated in how to recycle, 
it does sound like an argument of convenience from our behalf. Like it's just mm-hmm. too much of a pain in the ass. Yeah. And you're saying it's so complicated, but I don't really understand what's complicated about it. What's complicated is it's the organization of garbage, which is kind of antithetical to the nature of throwing something away. It's how do I throw something away that I don't value? How do I throw it away properly? Too, yeah. Right? I don't know. I'm just looking at the garbage bin is, well, it's off camera, but Right over there, and maybe four steps away from it is the recycling bin. But what makes it difficult is try leaving a nail water bottle with a cap on it and dropping it off at a recycle place. You get chastised and raked over the coal just like you shot someone because you didn't take the cap off. So it just discourages you from coming back here again. But there's also, you know, and I don't want to get into it too much on the show because I don't want to go through every single thing and be like, is it recyclable or not? Because we're probably going to learn it's all recyclable. But (laughs) it winds up being like... Okay, is a milk carton recyclable with mm-hmm. the milk in it? Do I have to wash it out before yes. I put in the recycling? All right, is this cardboard? Is it paper? Is it the same thing? Uh, it winds up being like you have to learn about all these different things to see if they're recyclable. Now, I would say the answer is yes, probably. Mm-hmm. But in terms of what we're pushing in Newfoundland and Labrador for recycling most of the time, it is plastic bottles yes, and cans yes. and beer bottles. I don't exactly. see a big push on papers and cardboards and composting. Like, that mm-hmm. That doesn't happen around here. Yeah, so the thing is with paper is it is way more biodegradable than plastic, plastic. is. But see, the thing is, is that if you can reuse it, you know, it's better than letting it just biodegrade over I don't know how many years. Right. So like that's the argument. Yeah. And from what I remember up in Rogers Recycling, they were not collecting paper. No, like, no I, you weren't no. going in. There were bundles of paper like no. from, you know, confidential the, the goods, shredded you, goods. Right. The other, other thing you sort of have to look into when you're doing a little bit of research on like, why did we even start making plastic bags in the beginning? Some of it was out of, you know, we wanted to move away from paper, which now we seem to want to move back to. Mm-hmm. But a lot of it was we got a lot of petroleum byproduct that's a waste as a as you know, a byproduct of the production of fossil fuel, taking, you know, oil out of the ground and turning it mm-hmm. into gasoline, you end up with a lot of extra waste. So what are we going to use that for? So it was a pretty clever way to actually go, well, here is a consumer product that comes out of rather than having 4 billion tons of sludge get fired into the ocean every year. <laughs> let's turn it into something for Walmart to mm-hmm. fire the groceries into. So I thought it was, that is kind of recycling in a way. That's true. I right? didn't know that. That is a good point. But yeah. it's, mm-hmm. if that was turned into something that wasn't single-use plastic, that would be a better use. Sure. And I, I think everyone could agree on that, that the more times you get to use something, the better. It's just in a place where <laughs> it's a big ask to ask anyone to change anything whatsoever, all you got to do, if you don't believe that, is go up to New Randaboots in Dandelion. You'll mm-hmm. realize that it change is not good when people want to do it. Yeah. And like Costco's only been open 24 hours. I think there's been like two accidents already. <laughs> but it, it's just a type of thing where it's like, I'm tired of these big sweeping blanketing legislations coming out that's just totally banning stuff. The object now is to just all or none, ban it or legalize it. There's no like middle ground anymore to do some research and say, well, how could we get people mm-hmm. to actually recycle more efficiently? And I think the best way to do that is to actually go and say, well, why is it such a pain in the ass to recycle now? And then get rid of those elements. Yeah. If we're going to be right down to walls, if right? We're going to be relying on the education of like the general population oh, for it. The, we'll be here for the years. planet. will be a waste. The whole planet will be. A <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But hopefully if technology can advance to the point that maybe we could figure out a way to dispose of these plastic bags more. I don't know. In some, some regards, I just think some parts of it might be a bit premature. But mm-hmm. I mean, once again, once you get down to it, it winds up being the convenience argument for the most part. So. Yeah, but I mean, they're not banning all bags. They're not banning single use bags. They're banning plastic bags. So biodegradable bags are totally OK. Paper bags are totally OK. Mm. So you're. Yeah, you're I'm, I'm just you got, I'm just grinning because in. when you're saying they're not banning all plastic bags, apparently all single all, use. Bags. Yeah, single use plastic bags. Apparently a plastic bag black market has opened up in certain places <laughs> where they're banned. Yes. And I was just thinking I forgot to mention that point. So, yeah. So, yes, people still want plastic bags, <laughs> even when there's the reusable ones. We'll go, go to the black market. Imagine the dirty deals done behind the village mall. <laughs> just giving you like a plastic bag for a five dollar bill or something. It'd be hilarious. You're not getting rid of it. We're just going underground. Exactly. And just to sort of pivot off there into the technology aspect, because yeah. it was brought up, I think that would be a good chance for you to jump in. Yeah, basically my topic this week is, I'm just curious, for the last couple of weeks or a month, I've been floating the idea of how to do a topic on future technologies, asking a question like, where are we going to be in 50 years, winds up being a little bit too broad. So I wanted to kind of get the panel's opinion on human augmentation. And what I mean by that is basically the merging of technology and man, man and machine. So I want to know, 
the you, Borg. Basically, you know, or the Terminator, you know, I'm wondering how long do you think it'll be before we get there? Is it something we are going to see? Are we going to start merging and enhancing ourselves with machine parts or, you know, technology of any kind? And you know what? I'll throw it off to Grace first. I have a little comment on this. We are there. Already? We are think? there. Absolutely. It's called body hacking. Have you ever heard the term? Yeah, okay. That, that it's it's a, a term called body hacking and that doesn't necessarily all need to be technological, although some of okay. it is technological. And you take that and to um, enhance yourself. Cochlear implants. Oh, that's that a good is, point. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Um, artificial limbs. That is absolutely. And yeah. so uh, the, these are all, all forms of technological body hacking. But if you look uh, something like an IUD to for pregnancy prevention. Yeah. That is a form of body hacking. Would someone say it's technological? Maybe not because there aren't necessarily mechanically moving well, parts. As someone but, who's doing technology studies, I can tell you that technology is anything absolutely. from a pencil to a computer. So anything that does a specific job, uh, that's a tool. So exactly. yeah, an IUD would be technology. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So uh, I'm just I'm mostly saying some people might not consider it. I would definitely consider it technology. So mm. we're definitely already there. I think the question you posed in the uh, in the group chat was, would we take part in it? Yeah, but I was, you know, I was also thinking of more extreme examples, yeah. of oh, course, yeah, than, absolutely. you know, an IUD. But so, yeah. so your a lot of your focus there is on parts mm-hmm. and supplements or like artificial appendages. And also what we have access to now. Mm-hmm. I think that that stuff is great because you still have control. As mm-hmm. someone who's an avid Star Trek fan, <laughs> you're never afraid of the Borg implant. You're afraid of the Borg collective. Mm-hmm. So the collective consciousness is what I am vehemently afraid of. I think it I think it would be the end of individuality. Aren't we? Aren't we, we no, Ham, we're not there yet. I have, <laughs> we're going look there. at us. No. We're very different. Yeah. We're not on a collective conscience. Yeah. But you know what I mean? Like to open up any type of cranial implant that could affect the way that you think, view the world, whatever. I, that is something that were that to ever arise in society, I would protest it. I'd protest it f- to the nth degree, to the point where I'm willing to go to prison for my beliefs on that, because I think it would be the end. Go so, ahead. So China kind of has that built into their social networks where they make examples of them being good citizens. Yeah, and I've heard like, of this. To like raise up their social standing yeah. and they report on people. Kind of like, like what if that got like built into them? Well, this is what I'm saying. Like, it's a means to control, right? That's yeah. that's what the Borg Queen does to make sure all her drones are paying attention to her from this side of the galaxy to the other side. And, you know, you do not want to be part of the hive mind. I'm going to mm-hmm. tell you right now. Watch. You don't have to watch all 786 episodes <laughs> to realize that. Jeez. Yeah. And that's kind of what I was thinking of, too. I, I was thinking about just general uh, enhancements. Like, I don't know if there was an ocular implant like you Mm -hmm. know in terms of let's say i can look at a box of cereal and it'd give me all the calorie information i don't have to do any of it or you know i wouldn't really want pictures and video recording because i you know you'd wind up fixating on that using it too much i think but when i was thinking about different augmentations the one part that i would never cross i think is like any type of cranial implant Mm -hmm. like what you were saying like anything that can control the way you think or you know and they'd probably pitch it as a way of like Hey, infinite knowledge, you know, you can Google anything at a moment's notice. You'll know anything, yeah. you know, your possibilities, your potential is limitless. But I think that would be the point that's very scary. Even if it doesn't influence you. I'm even like on the fence about all this location service stuff. Mm-hmm. Just your phone being able to subtly suggest you advertisements. I don't want something scanning my fucking brain and making certain things seem more appealing to me or not. I don't like that. Well, do you remember when we were just testing one night to see if Facebook was listening? <laughs> Mr. Bean. <laughs> Mis- Mr. <laughs> I said I said Mr. Bean Fleshlight like three or four times really loud, which yeah, of course, weird thing just to, to think see about. Because- just to see. Yeah. And then we scrolled down Facebook like after five, ten minutes, there was Mr. Bean was oh, on yeah. there. It we was. were like, what the hell? Honest to God, that yeah. is a true story. Yeah. yeah. So and everyone has like stories of that where Facebook or, or uh, social media has been listening and finding this. It happens yeah. to you all, all the, the time. time. It almost yeah. never happens to me. Okay, but we were talking last night. Mm-hmm. You didn't know about Google Chrome keeping track of like what, what you look at. And like basically, you could probably build out based on how I Google things and how I view things. You could probably build out kind of like how my mind works. A personality. Term, yeah, like how do I Google, you know, a T-Rex? You know, am I typing T-Rex or Tyrannosaurus Rex? You know, T-Rex. Like there's a lot of different ways of how you can search terms. And they basically, they can build a portfolio around what type of person you are mm-hmm. by watching how you use the internet. 
So maybe that's why I get it a little bit more because they have a more rounded, built out portfolio of who Colton Simpson is. And I don't like but, it. No, I don't like it's, it. it's a little it's bit ins- scary. It's insidious. I don't like it at all. Yeah. What do you think, Cam? I don't like that at all because I remember we were talking about Yu Gi Oh cards once and I got sent an Amazon link for Yu Gi Oh cards literally as soon as I shut my mouth about it. There you go. Literally mm-hmm. as soon as I shut my mouth about it. But. In terms of like augmented stuff, like there's there's some pretty cool shit. Like there's like NFC stuff for like chips that'll like record your medical information and oh, stuff like that. Don't like that. I think I think that's actually that's actually a good thing in terms of like medical information because you could like if you're dying, they could just scan your appendage unless it's like severed off. <laughs> or so, it escalated so very quickly. What, what would you think of like uh, trackers and stuff? Like there's an episode of of Black oh, Mirror. We we already have those in our pockets, but I I think we need to cut down on that. I mean, imagine as like an inmate in a jail, mm-hmm. if you could just whack a tracker into someone and go, okay, if he gets out, it's going to make <laughs> it a fuck of a lot easier to find him, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. But right now, there's we lots got them to keep pile them trackers on them, right? <laughs> well, the, yeah. The thing is, I mean, you want to be able to know where these dangerous people are, so there's an argument to be made there that you could avoid everything if you just had them tagged like cows in a field. And then you make the argument, well, that way I could avoid losing my children exactly. if I have the tag. And them. this and this is how insidious ideas come to light in the oh, public. Yeah. They're always blanketed mm-hmm. with all these rosy colored things, plastic bag ban. <laughs> all, all, all of these things are always laid out with the best of intentions to sound really good and better for everyone. But really, there's a sinister motivation underneath all of it. And you should be hesitant yeah. and agreeing with stuff. Mm-hmm. There, there is like one brain implant that I th- saw that was actually useful. Um, it's just a thing that like fires electrons into your brain if you have right. um, traumatic brain injuries, and it's used for people that have like gone to war and like maybe they have like PTSD or to change the way they think. No, no, it's to help them form new pathways. It doesn't change the way they think. It just helps them well, rebuild if you think, something. Well, if, if you think kind of darkly and, and in a post-traumatic stress way, I would kind of have to change the way that your brain works in order Does to, it to do it. Does it stimulate brain plasticity? Is that what it's doing? Yes. Okay, yes. all right. It's, um, so it's, what does that mean? So basically, plasticity meaning malleability, flexibility. So you know how it's much easier as a young child to learn a new language, learn mm. new skills. As you get older, it's harder to learn new things. You know, yeah, you get a bit stoned. Old dog, yeah, I get what you're new tricks, right? Um, but... If this is stimulating brain plasticity, it might make it easier to recover. Same thing with recovering from a brain injury. You know, a small child recovering from brain surgery has a much higher success rate than an adult. Mm. Um, So if it's stimulating brain plasticity, now I don't know anything about this, but from what you were saying about building new pathways, that's kind of what I was interpreting from what you were saying. Yeah, it basically just gives your brain a big shock of electricity. Yeah, so that wouldn't necessarily, from the very small amount that I understand, wouldn't change the way you think. It would change your brain's ability to intake information. I'd have to do an awful lot of reading. <laughs> that. I'd have to do an awful lot of self like introspection and reading and it's, education before I'd ever allow something mm-hmm. to get whacked in my brain. But it's it's basically just used for people that have brain damage or like mm-hmm. either like physical or like severe like emotional brain damage. Mm-hmm. It's not for us. No, and, and and just to play devil's advocate, imagine if like someone were able to harness that and hack into it like for example when onstar which is a service Mm. that's provided by chevrolet to like control the entertainment system in your car and and provide you gps instructions and shut your vehicle off if it is stolen and report it to the police i have it in the truck it's a wonderful feature but there was a bunch of instances where people were hacking in and shutting vehicles off Mm -hmm. and like setting off alarms and opening doors and stuff like that so good idea in theory but it opened up this whole other can of worms for people to do stuff they shouldn't be doing, right? Imagine someone could hack into your brain and start making you do stuff. And how far do you think we're actually away from, like, merging? I know what you're saying. Like, yes, there are certain things like pacemakers and IUDs and stuff, but, like, let's say the Apple Watch doesn't exist anymore. You turn over your wrist, you can see a little display, you know, like, you know, you've seen it in science fiction movies. Like, do you think that stuff is actually going to come to pass where it actually is embedded? Because we are getting close, like wearable technology is getting sleeker and sleeker and smaller and, you know, 
uh, nondescript. Like, do you think it's going to get to a point where it actually is like science fiction movies or? I think it depends on what the fashion of the day is, because there's a good argument to be made that we have had technology embedded in us before, like spacers in your ears was a huge thing back in the double O's. It's true. Yeah. And it was you could argue that it was mm-hmm. a tool. So it's a piece of tech and it was stuck in your ear to do a job, space out your ear to give you a big old hole, which looks stupid, but that's what it was there for. Mm -hmm. And we've moved away from that again because now society has shifted and said, yeah, that's ugly. We we don't Mm -hmm. like the way that looks. So I think there's a whole physical dimension to that question is like does it look good if it looks good people are probably going to do it at least for a while and what what about us would any of us like i'm not talking about ones that are necessary like if you lose an arm and you want to replace your never. arm. let's say you would never do never. it like any any regard like let's say i don't know i i type a lot let's say there was a way that i could have something there that i would never develop carpal tunnel or nope. you know i could type faster or something like that you guys would never do it for just enhancement I mean, it's hard to never say never, but there's two questions. One, is it connected to any type of network or any type Mm. of like Bluetooth, even if it's just between me and the machine for the the keyboard, for example? Yeah. If there's any type of like wireless single, the answer is no. Okay. So if you uh, lost a hand, would you get a prosthetic hand? Absolutely. Okay. As long as the hand wasn't receiving updates from Skynet. Okay. Yes. (laughs) I mean, you know, in in the future, they probably will. And it's very possible Mm -hmm. that it may. Yeah. And that would be something that I'd have to seriously sit down and go like, Mm -hmm. I need to know exactly what's coming in. Like, you know how you skip the software update file on your phone just to get to the bottom and go download, Mm -hmm. right? You skip over to read me. I'd be actually reading the read me to be like, all right, this arm's not going to come at me in my sleep or malfunction and misfire and rip my esophagus out. You know what I mean? (laughs) So, no. I'm too queasy. I I mean, I don't think I could handle getting a tattoo, much less getting something implanted in me. Mm -hmm. If I lost a limb and, you know, getting a mechanical arm, let's say, you know, I've got a friend with a mechanical arm um, and, you know, I can put it on and take it off as need be. Sure. But if someone says, okay, we're gonna have to slice you open to insert this thing, unless I absolutely needed it, unless it was like, let's say a pacemaker. And they said, look, you're going to have another heart attack unless you get this pacemaker. Mm -hmm. It would have to be pretty, you know, tough times for me to pass through the queasiness aspect of actually getting it put in. The, to actually accept it. It's the difference between replacement and enhancement. That's what I'm well. saying, yeah. There's enhancing, not replacing. Yeah. That's the thing. You enhanced your eyes. Yes, you know, I did. You yeah. know, so out of all of us here, you're the one with the one enhancement, I guess. You know, none yep. of us, as far as I know, have plastic surgery to enhance yep. how we look. It's true. So, it's you know, good point. I, yeah, so I'm thinking about, like, actually things that you would need enhancing. That's why I was just talking about typing or something. Mm-hmm. I, tr- I think probably in the future, the first facet, and it sounds funny to say, that'll be improved upon, I would say will probably be in regards to a sexual matter because sexuality always increases technology so if i when i was thinking about it and it's weird to say i'd say one of the first places that'll probably be improved upon will be stuff like ed like erectile dysfunction oh yeah i think it'll dick probably be a spot that that'll be enhanced like put some nanobots in your dick. i don't know connect it up to the bluetooth and your rock hard i don't know <laughs> like you know i i Possible. think i think it'll be pushed in that area first the, the, there's already stuff like that. Uh, all right, I'm well, there sure. you go. I'm not Googling and now, it yet. I can't so. remember where I saw this. I feel like I saw it in a so TV I show. Say Grace. No, no, no. <laughs> I feel like I saw this in a TV show, and I don't remember what it is, so now I'm... I'm doubting the the validity yeah, of yeah, it. Yeah. But there was uh, something that I saw where basically... Um, somebody had testicular cancer or something like that and had, had lost a testicle. And so they were going to replace it with a fake testicle, like a, a glass ball or something like that yeah, to, yeah. to put it in there for, I guess, making balance. it look yeah, yeah, and fall yeah. over one side. But then there was another thing I saw that was essentially, if, if that testicle was not there, they could insert essentially a pump to use, like to help with erectile dysfunction. Oh, yeah. Does this I, sound familiar we to you? Yeah, I've I don't remember where this. I saw it, but I mean, somebody came up with it at the very least to put in a fictional TV show, which means it's not out of the realm of possibility. Yeah, and you know, I wasn't talking about, you know, making things longer or, or anything no. like that. It was like literally like an aid for like if you're like 50 or, you know, and you're it, having and issues it depends, with it, right? Like, it, see, once again, you're getting into the, into the terminology, but like enhancement, replacement modification i would almost call like the laser eye surgery was Mm -hmm. it was an enhancement but it was also a modification Mm -hmm. because all you did was essentially modify the muscles in the eye to see clearer Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you didn't add anything in the the byproduct was that you enhanced the vision but you didn't do anything aside from just loosening the muscle in the eyes Mm -hmm. so that i could see a little bit better whereas you know 
getting a a, a dick robot <laughs> would be a, a stark like difference well, yeah, to me, right? If it was robotic, but I don't know, maybe I don't know how any of this shit works, obviously, but let's say if there was something down there that would increase the blood flow. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it wouldn't be like having a robot cock. It would be, you know, <laughs> no, but similar to what flow, Ham you know? was saying about electrodes, you know, in the brain. Yes, stimulating yes something my... like that. Like, I would not be shocked if that is one of the first areas that is used to push human augmentation, mm -hmm. like Where's actually God, changing Mark? things. Right. Mm -hmm. Because. Virtual reality. What's the first thing people do? They go to Pornhub and check it well, out, right? Yeah, like, if the holodeck was available yes. in real life. I mean, my God. I you wouldn't want to shine a black light in I pity the janitor. Right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But anyways, I guess I'll just throw it off to Grace here now. All right. Kind of inspired by two things that Colton has done in the past. One was the fast food ranking. Yeah. And the other was the would you rathers. So I have a list of food related questions. They're Good. not all necessarily would you rather. And but, you know, it could be a yes or no. It could be this is the wrong way. This is the right way. I promise it's not how to make Mr. Noodles or is, <laughs> is soup a cereal or something like that. And they're not all bougie, which was Colton's request. Yeah, I was hoping it's not like does Brie belong on a cheese no. board? Is margarine <laughs> butter? First uh. of all, yes. Yes and no, but uh, no, those are not the kinds of questions. Right. What wine be... shall we pair with a charcuterie? <laughs> no, I've, I've taught you so much. I'm really proud that that was your example. Okay, so um, soda, pop, soft drinks, whatever you want to call it, yeah. you yes. know, depending on where you're from. Uh, how does it taste best? A big plastic bottle, a small plastic bottle, a glass bottle, a fountain drink, or a can? Can. Can? Depends on what you're eating, though. No, eating glass bottle. <laughs> it, it depends on what you're eating. Like, if you're having Mary Browns, you need to have a tin of Pepsi. Got to. Okay. Got to be in the tin. You would never pour from, like, the big, great, big bottle. What? Never. <laughs> what? Not from the two liter. No. Uh, because the up. taste is different. You don't get the same carbonation in the bottles that you do in the tin. Now, however, sometimes you don't want that super, like, like nasal opening, like, old factory forcing carbonated burst you want the actual like syrupy taste depends mm. on what you're eating like if you're having a bag of chips i prefer the bottle right it all depends on what you're doing here because a glass bottle actually does taste very different from uh, a plastic bottle so it depends on yes, what you're drinking does, like yeah. i like sprite in a glass bottle i don't like sprite in a plastic bottle very much and i think we could all agree that two liter bottles are terrible they're whatever terrible. you're having yeah. you know they're good for the first pour once they're left out they're terrible for two liter bottles what you want the only thing i've ever used that for is mix that's it mm. Throw that in the drop of Because you're not paying tight. attention to the yeah. actual cola. I'll tell you exactly. what's actually wrong with it. It's not the plastic. It's the seal on it. Seal's no good. <laughs> yeah, because it, it's right. You and better you, drink it, it all in one smack because it'll be gone in yeah. a day. And he sees the boys at Pepsi just tossing out the two liters. Oh, yeah. Beat the shit. No good. <laughs> That's true, yeah. Oh, garbage. Yeah, so me, I prefer it in a can, but then I like it poured into a glass. I don't like the taste ah, of the now. can. Mm. When I'm drinking it. The can is actually coated in plastic. Okay, well, I don't like the taste of the plastic then. I don't know what Loves it is. It. But it's Loves like, it. I don't know. It, it like gives a weird mouth feel. I'm not a fan. Now, yeah. I, I will, if push comes to shove, I'm not saying I will never drink it. I know some people who will not drink out of cans mm -hmm. uh, because they've, they're afraid it's dirty or whatever. It's not clean. But just I find that the mouth feel of it, I really don't like. Okay. Yeah. Next yeah. question. Okay. All right. So uh, does the shape of the pasta affect how it tastes? Yes. Spiraled craft Dinner sucks. <laughs> the normal craft Dinner is way better. <laughs> it's just that simple. I, I'm not very adventurous when it comes to pasta. <laughs> I like spaghetti and I used to do penne a little okay. bit. Yeah. So right. uh, yes, I would say because penne, when you're having it, like if I just do the same spaghetti sauce, which I've done with spaghetti versus penne, the penne doesn't hold it like spaghetti or linguine. I don't even know what to do, right? Yeah, it's, you know, they're like little... Is it spiral? They're one? like little circles. I don't know how to describe they're what they They're kind of like. like a trapezoid, but circular. They're weird. They're kind of rounded a bit. What Basically, is it, supper what time or math class? <laughs> the, <laughs> the sauce slips through them. It's no yeah. good. Yeah. Go. Yeah, Hayden, it, what do you think? Yeah, I, I do think it affects it. Okay. I, I, I think so, too. And uh, particularly, Very passionate answers like, here today. <laughs> well, this, this is what I'm going for. And I mean, I'm a fan of noodles without sauce, too, Ugh. sometimes. Like, if I'm, particularly if I'm queasy or something like that, just yep. put some butter on there and that's it. And Marjorie, I find Marjorie. even, <laughs> me do it. even then, even if I don't have sauce on it, and I think that's usually people's biggest argument is certain types of sauce stick to different shapes of noodles better. Yeah. But I find even, like, there are some days I'm in the mood for macaroni and not spaghetti or vice versa, for instance. 
Okay, um, this is, I, I don't, I guess I do have an answer for this one, actually. But McFlurry versus Blizzard, which McFlurry. one is better? Creme brulee McFlurry is the best so, tasting thing I've ever had in my life. So once again, this comes down to the flavor, right? Like, the creme brulee McFlurry is on a whole other level. It's <laughs> it is, amazing. Yeah. It like, is, if yeah. you're on any diet, when those come out, you gotta, you gotta pick up Good one luck. a day. Good you luck. You got to. <laughs> so... But I think the Blizzard is better just because of the selection of flavors. I think if it was literally a Smarties McFlurry compared to a Smarties Blizzard, the Smarties McFlurry would be better. But McDonald's has like three or four choices of McFlurries. And that Nanaimo bar one? Ass. Ass is terrible. I had three scoops of it and threw it out. I don't throw it any ice cream. Yeah. That's but true. I actually like the ice cream in the McFlurry better than the Blizzard. Same. So, mm. I mean, I don't I don't remember the last time I had a McFlurry, and I'm not a big fan of Blizzards in general because I don't really like soft ice cream terribly. Mm. But definitely, I would pick McFlurry if I had to choose. Ham, what about you? I don't care either way here. You all right, right. I, I'm going to put the ice cream in my mouth. That's about it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. Um, how do you cut a sandwich? Do you cut it? diagonally do you cut it vertically do you cut it horizontally do you not cut it at all do Diagonal. you use those <laughs> yeah. fancy things at the grocery store where you can come out with like dinosaur shaped sandwiches i never seen yes those? <laughs> as a kid but now you got to cut it diagonally if you cut it in half like vertically or horizontally that's like a madman. Like, you're you're crazy. Look stupid. We got to look at how the how the big boys do it like when you get a smith sandwich yes like a turkey and dressing sandwich she's caught on a diagonal She's not actually cut in half, right? And the packaging is triangular. It's beautiful. It sits in there perfect. You can actually see what you're eating because it's facing out towards you. The argument there is like a Subway <clears throat> sub. If they cut it diagonally, I'd be upset. You yeah, know, in the middle, if they cut it diagonally, yeah. I wouldn't like that. Well, but, like, depending on the crowd that works at Subway, sometimes they fox that up. And oh, does it that for way. sure. They certainly do at Casada. That's for freaking well oh, sure. Oh, God. What a sin, boss. What a sin. <laughs> no, they need to get her shit together, Ham. Ham. You're not, you're not piping ah. up. You don't have strong opinions on food. You'll eat anything as long as there's no meat in it. <laughs> Shot back. Oh, yes. <sighs> no, I, I think there's a time and place to cut it either way. But I think that the diagonal is a good, that's a good Ooh. solid uh, method. When is the time or place to cut a square sandwich in the middle like a madman? I saw, I saw some nice sandwiches where they cut it like three ways and in third <laughs> look some all right go to the next <laughs> i'm surprised you didn't say crust or no crust to tell you the truth but anyways go on oh yeah there gonna, we go okay. i'm not even gonna start that racket so just move okay, on okay all, all right. right we'll blow past it if we got time uh skittles do you eat them one flavor at a time or can you toss a bunch of them in your mouth i'm a mad man i take a handful <laughs> throw them all in there let the let the flavors get to know each other yeah i don't did, you gotta taste the rainbow boy you can't just exactly. taste the red <laughs> yeah, you know? I know some people who they eat one flavor at a time. Like they might eat two red ones. There's something wrong with them then. <laughs> <laughs> who got time for that? And I hate the lime flavor by itself. But when you mix it in there with the mm -hmm. raspberry oh, yeah. or the orange or whatever, oh yeah, it's fine. Yeah, though. I'm a big fan of Skittles. Mm -hmm. I also, I mean, also Madman over here will sometimes buy like different flavors of Skittles, like mm -hmm. different packages, and pour them all in the bowl. So you really don't know what you're. Oh getting. no, that, well, that's there, going too far. There's I'm only getting... one type of Skittles you buy. And that's the original sour ones? Skittles. Oh, sour oh, Skittles no. are so good. Oh, they're amazing. No, no and I think that might be a goose bay thing because old Arcturus theater. That's oh, all yeah. they all ever the had because they would keep for so long. Right? Yeah, you're eating them and your tongue's just rubbed raw oh, and yeah. bleeding basically by oh, the yeah. end of it. Oh, sour Perfect. Skittles. Have you had the ones where they don't dye them? Mm. They're all white and you have no idea what flavor it's going to be? No. I tried them the other day. They're kind of fun. I mean, they're they're the exact same thing. They just <laughs> don't have a color, so you don't know what you're going to get. It's a bit of a thrill. Wow, it's fun. <laughs> Wild night at Grace is on Wednesday. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, if you have a plate full of food, can the different foods touch? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, okay. I would say yes, but there are times when you got like, I don't know, something that's kind of soupy next to something that's supposed to be dry that I'd be like, no. But in general, yeah, sure. Okay. All right. Some people feel very, very strongly about yeah, that. I, know I wasn't people. sure. Yeah. Um, all right. I don't I feel like this will be like think back to your childhood. I don't know if anybody has eaten these recently. Do regular chicken nuggets or dino chicken nuggets taste better? Dino. <laughs> Depends on what you're referring to as regular chicken nuggets. Are we talking mm. about like, like regular the, shape? I mean, oh, just regular shape. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We'll go for the fucking Velociraptor <laughs> ones. Yes. 
<laughs> if it's just, you know, it yeah. depends on if we're, if we're talking about like Jane's chicken nuggets or something like that, like those are deadly. Yeah, that's, that's what I was going to say. Those those Jane's pub ones, they were deadly. Raisins, yay or nay? I like raisins. I like raisins too. I do as well, especially when they're chocolate covered. Mm. You know what? I'm going to go nay. I'm not going to sit down and eat, what is it, the sun made, the red packets? Oh, yeah. Yeah. They all come in gonna, one clump. Hey, yeah, I'm not going to sit down. Just give a little tap on the ass and they'd come all in one like dirty old clump. It was always disappointing getting those in your Halloween bag. You ever uh, get those? Yes. We had a dentist on our block who would give out raisins. Yeah, no. I'm just going to say no. I do eat them sometimes, but mostly no. Okay, all right. <laughs> um, is it appropriate to drink milk as a like when you're thirsty, like a tall glass no. of milk? No, there's something wrong with you. <laughs> I don't like it personally, but a lot, but a lot of people do, and imagine, it does look weird. I don't necessarily agree with drinking milk, anyways. Like, imagine going for like a good hard run, coming home, and then, like Ron Burgundy. Yeah, yes, drinking that's a big glass think of, of this milk. Question. No, no. Okay, so that's a no. That's weird. I, I saw, I saw one of my friends um, roaming around the mall with a carton of eggnog. <laughs> What's Colton? I, I would, I would be more inclined to agree with that. Yeah, like oh. we always used to have a glass of milk with supper. Oh, no, always. that's weird. No. Always. And no. like I have like now that I'm a little bit older, I typically just go with water. But uh, sure. no, it was always if you wanted juice with supper, you had to have a glass of milk first. Ugh. Like you had to, you know, get your calcium in. Ugh, no, that's um, too much mixing. I'm looking at the time. Maybe one more. How do you eat your pizza? Do you eat it with your hand? Do you eat it with a knife and fork? Do you fold it before eating it? Oh, How yeah. do you eat it? Depends on the pizza. Exactly. Never ever with a fork or knife. Even no. in a restaurant. That's foolishness. Even if you were in a restaurant, that's foolishness. No. You it's just wait food. until it cools down. If your excuse is it's too hot to handle, <laughs> wait for it to cool the down. The one exception is when my mom makes pizza, and our pizzas. I'm sorry, mom. They're not that great. I've definitely <laughs> had better pizzas, but when you make like that, her home- sister makes a good pizza though. <laughs> oh, that's true. That's true. But uh, yeah, when you eat my mom's pizza at home, usually it's hot as all hell, and it doesn't have the structural integrity of a pizza. Mm-hmm. You got to cut that with a knife and fork, but mostly with your hands. And I don't do the New York style folding. Mm-hmm. No. Um, when I was in New York, I did do it because I didn't want to look too much like a tourist, despite <laughs> my I love NY bag that was probably <laughs> hanging by my waist. But yeah, I did try it down there. But no, mostly I just eat it flat. The pizza fold is good when you need to get a good bit of pizza in you mm-hmm. at one time. I can eat it fast enough flat that I don't <laughs> need to fold it. <laughs> you, know, you don't need any advantages is what you're saying. I fold it. Really? Definitely, yeah. So you'd fold like a hot and ready from Little Caesars? You would just go straight in? I think I would. You know, it also depends on how thick the crust is. If it's a thinner crust, I'm definitely going to fold it, particularly mm-hmm. for structural integrity, getting it to your mouth so it doesn't flop over. Little Caesars, I mean, I've only had it oh. once in the last 10 years, but their crust is pretty firm. It is, yeah. So I feel like folding it is more of an effort than just eating I'm it wrong. by the point there is one little pizza you do need a knife and fork for and that are those old welfare napoli ones oh yeah that you used to yeah, get from yeah. co-op that used to come on little cardboard tray mini pizzas mini pizzas <laughs> yeah yeah you used to have to cut those no, you just, oh the ones you that could, came two yeah, two yeah, yeah, yeah. now i had a buddy who used to fold them together into a burger yeah. and just eat them that way because they'd be joined right together on one side or burn the hell out of your fingers just oh, yeah. trying to hold it yeah. like a disc and eat yeah. it yeah i've done that too uh, but yeah, most of the time I I just eat it plain. Okay, cool. well I had more on my list, but uh, I don't want to take up too much time. So Ham, you're up. All right. Um, I wanted to talk about times that we've maybe missed some social cues or failed to read a situation, and I think I'm gonna pass it off to josh first (laughs) (laughs) okay so like for your question ham i did have a hard time believe it or not actually nailing down a solid specific incident that was appropriate to tell on the air (laughs) i got a few but so it's just the type of thing where it's like i'll tell you one that frequently comes up that i find is like really really hard to dance your way around is trying to give a pregnant woman, a compliment. And oh, that could is, be tricky. Is, yeah. is one that I find myself... Got in some mix, not, on you. Well, for, 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 for <laughs> one, we live in the most ogest province in, in Canada, so sometimes it might just be a bit of Kentucky Fried it's true. and not a baby in there. That's true. So, so through the various, <laughs> the various incidences over the years of me like no. accidentally saying, like, oh, yeah, you know, you look good. You know, you got a bit of weight on, but you're wearing it well type of thing, right? <laughs> Why and, and then you put yourself in that situation? Because though? Newfoundlanders and Labradorians in general, if you haven't seen someone for a long time, what's the first thing to come out of your mouth? That is true. Is 
oh, you looks good. Got a bit of weight gone or got a little, oh, yeah, oh, you know, really? you got a bit of weight on. Mm-hmm. That's the first thing that someone makes a comment on if you haven't seen them in a long time. It's true. So yeah. if you see someone growing up that, you know, has got a bone in the pot, it's very sort of difficult to sort of kind of like dance the way around the question of like, oh, yeah, you know. Yes, boy, what are you up to? Oh, not much. Oh, you, you know, you're looking good. You know, just when are you expecting type of thing? <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know, it's, it's never a hard, do that. It, and that's what I mean. So <laughs> over the years, I've sort of learned to just, they could be fat. They could be pregnant. <laughs> let's just fucking let it alone until someone brings it up on their, on their own. How I've seen people do it as like a podcast guest, let's say on the H3 podcast where the Gila was pregnant for such a long time. They just always talk about how radiant she looks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's what they, oh, your hair looks lovely. You're, yeah, you know, you're full of life yeah the, the, the real it. trick is is you know some people you go oh my gosh i can't believe you're pregnant you can't even see your belly oh thank you and then other people might say well well no like i'm growing a baby inside of me or it might be oh you know you're looking yes. great or, you know, never know and to sort of answer ham's question because i do know how is it you don't pick up on the social cues i know that with women a lot of time they don't like this say anything until you're so far into the pregnancy mm-hmm. yeah but usually come on everyone fucking knows anyways and usually they're after telling half a dozen people and everyone is just supposed to like keep this secret from each other even though everybody knows and there's been a couple of times before in the past where like friends of like a spouse at the time might be pregnant and you accidentally say like oh yeah well you're gonna have a fucking handful here now in about six months when you got you know diapers going left right and center mm-hmm. and there's someone in the crowd that doesn't know yeah mm-hmm. that they were pregnant and there you go you just let the cat out of the bag right mm-hmm. so anyways yeah that's one that i've struggled with of many <laughs> <laughs> one that i've struggled with was when i was in toronto was how to use well, not necessarily how to use the subway, but all of the machinations around the subway. And one I'll remember is when Josh was visiting me in Toronto. Uh, Josh, when was that? That was like 2015, wasn't it? Or it was a couple of years ago. It was yeah. right around your birthday. It was in November. Yeah. But uh, I remember we took the GO train a couple of times. We took it for free, which you're, <laughs> you're not supposed to do. But literally at the time, we didn't know any better. It was the type of thing where it was just, there was no ticket agents there. You know, I didn't know how to work the GO train thing. I just hopped on. Saw other people hopping on. Hopped off. Hopped off. Not that was it. it. So anyways, you know, it is six dollars and some odd cents so away. So we were <laughs> stealing a little a bit. <laughs> but the one that I remember, and for a lot of things in society, I believe if you do it with confidence, oh, you will get by. I remember. In this one situation, I was very confident. Got ready. I did not get by. So something like going to the theater. We've proven a couple of times within the last couple of months. <laughs> You don't need to buy a ticket. We do buy a ticket, yeah. but the line is too long. And, you know, there's an old lady at the front and can't find her ticket. We just go, ah, f- screw it. And we walk by. You know, they never ask us for our tickets. But when I was trying to get into the subway that one day, remember. there was a huge line. And Brandon and Josh, you guys had to actually get little coupons where I was like tokens, th- tokens to get on the subway. Whereas everyone in front of me, they were just scanning their wallet and going on. Now, I knew the Presto Pass was a thing. But I was like, if I do this confidently enough, no one will notice. So I walked well, the up. The door won't open. No, no, no. This was oh. in Union Station where it has like a big entrance. It's not like the little turnstiles. Oh. It's like a wide entrance. And two lines people just quickly. He failed to anticipate the tenacity of the guard. Oh, well, that was the thing. I went up and I pressed my wallet to it. And he goes, sir, a little lower. And I was like, oh, shit. So I pressed it a little lower. He's like, no, no, sir, just a little lower. And I just turned around on a dime and walked away. And he's like, no, sir, come back. Come back. And I just kept walking. And I was like, I ignored it and hopped in the line next to Josh. And, and to be fair, I've pointed this out many times when we're out banging around here in town. It's like. When you have a guard banging with, around with the bull, <laughs> yeah, you ever notice how nobody chirps me for it? <laughs> Everyone going, just looks at Cole. He's going right over there already. Yeah. But when you're walking by like a guard somewhere, I'm always making a comment because I used to be a guard years ago, and I was like, "Look, he's got the commissioner lean perfected, just nonchalantly leaning against something, not paying attention at all." Mm-hmm. But this guy was no the TTC. They were watching, so I didn't get through. Another time on the TTC when I was just kind of misreading things. Grace was visiting me actually i don't even know if she remembers this we were going downtown early in the morning to grab breakfast and we were sitting on the subway line you were talking to me about something breakfast or a dream you had or something i was kind of paying attention was this when we went to expectations yes that was so but, good but this dude sat down across the aisle from me we were basically on like a vacant subway train you know even though it was early in the morning we were early enough that nobody was there and he sat down across from us he's wearing sunglasses now there's two people that wear sunglasses on the subway me mm-hmm and then sketchy people is all hell. Hungover so, people. 
Totally different Not categories. This, well, maybe actually at this t- time in the morning. You're right. Anyways, he sat down. He had a big duffel bag. And it was a nondescript duffel bag. It wasn't like Good Life or something like that. Duffel bag. And I noticed him slowly inching it underneath the seat. Further and further. And then I noticed him sliding down the seat a little bit further and further. I was like, I looked at him and he was dressed just like the Boston Bomber. Like, not the little one, the old one. And I was like, oh my God, he is planting a bomb. And I remember as Grace was talking to me, I was just sitting there, like, staring at the duffel bag. I was like, can't make a scene. I'm not going to say anything. But we might blow up before we make it to Young Street. <laughs> Anyways, I don't know what happened to him, but he, kept, he did, like, move three to four seats away from his duffel bag and stuffed it below the seat. So it was strange, and he was dressed like, you know, big aviators on, dressed Bomber in, like, drug black. deal, one of the two. Probably. Could have been. But anyways, I didn't tell Grace until we got off the train. I don't because... even remember you telling me. I did, yeah. Oh, I'm sure you did. I don't yeah. remember it at all. Yeah, but anyways, I, I misread that social situation. Or maybe not. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe not. All right. I gotta... <laughs> Come on, it's, <laughs> <Hansen, laughs> it's your topic! <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll go next. There's, there's two ones I want to touch on. One is... When me and him go places, and this is this is famous oh, yeah. for happening. <laughs> yeah, we'll go up to a cash register, or I'll go like he used to work at one place, and I go by, and he'd be like, "Oh, is that your partner?" <laughs> <laughs> I can see that. The one I remember uh, is HMV. Oh, that was yeah, the best one. Which was the worst one. It was. It was... thought we were so sweet. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> well, Should have just grabbed his arse and went with it. <laughs> we were wearing what was it? Uh, Zelda sweaters or something. Yeah. We were both we were the, Yeah, we were both yeah. wearing oh the gosh. same like holiday Zelda sweaters sweet. at the time. I think I had like a jacket on, so they couldn't really see mine. So they were complimenting Ham on his uh, Zelda sweater, and he was like, "Yeah, he bought it for me as a gift." And then, <laughs> and, then I, and then I like took a step forward, and she knew that I had one too. And they were definitely like, "Oh, these guys are gay," <laughs> like you know. But uh, oh. yeah. What's cool. your second story, Ham? The second story is the time I accidentally got on a date oh that's gonna be my story too oh. how do you accidentally get on oh a date? you're about to find out you'll, you'll find out so i was at uh herself's house over there oh yeah and we were i think we were, we were having drinks weren't we i think wait i've never heard this story please continue no, no, i think no, i know no where this no, is no, going. no you know the story. story you know the story you know the story. or at least i remember the story because it ends in disappointment but it, anyways it, it does end in disappointment so we're having a few drinks, and one one of the girls that was at your house oh, asked me, "Hey, I'm do you want to go to a show?" Different time. And like, I'm just like, you know, my usual self. Just... Was she good looking? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Did you go? Oh, of course I went to the show. Good. It was a punk show. I'm going to go to a punk show, but I would have went to fucking Barney if she was good looking. <laughs> But no, I go I go to the show, saw a few bands, had had a good time, had a little m- mash, and her hair was messed up. So I was like, oh, boy, he looks foolish. So fix that. <laughs> Way to a woman's hair. Fix that. And, you know, they're like introducing me to people and they're like, you know, asking me who I am. And I'm like, you know, just just old ham here, you know, <laughs> heroin ham. <laughs> <laughs> Looking for me fix. The issue was you weren't looking for your fix that night. But anyways, so <laughs> I was not aware of what was going on. But we leave the show together, you know, walk down. I get a cab with my friend Pat, who happened to be driving the fucking cab. And I was like, what the hell are you doing driving a cab? And he was like, oh, you know, but you know, got to make a buck. And <laughs> he drives me up. I kiss Pat on the fucking lips. <laughs> And you never kissed her? And yet you wouldn't even grab his arse in HMV. <laughs> you kiss a cabbie. I'm heartbroken. Well, uh, you know, you gotta, gotta give old Pat a kiss, but that's it. <laughs> Jesus. Bob. And I'm like, all right, well, see you later. A few days later, we, we get from, I think we found out from you that somebody, it I, was Mark Bennett. I think it was Mark who we found Mark out from Bennett, you. And they're like, oh, boy, they're right, right endeared by you. And I was like... <laughs> I was like, I was on a fucking date. <laughs> and the worst part about it was I was already dating someone at the time. I was two-timing unintentionally. Double date, double date. It was not like two-timing. He went on one date with the previous person. That you didn't person. realize it yeah, was a yeah, date. Yeah, and that was the thing. He came, he came, I should have made the choice there. But you didn't mind kissing fucking Pat and you were supposed <laughs> to be with someone. I do remember him coming home and being very conflicted about 
you know, oh, well, I went on one date with this other girl, and now I don't think it was a date, but we were just hanging out, watching a show. I don't know. And he was all upset about it. I just... Hey, That's bye. after you told me, my son. <laughs> so I totally forgot this story, but there have been several people at my house who have found you quite endearing as well. And so I thought that's... you ended up on an accidental date with one of those fine gentlemen. And so oh. that's where I thought the story was going. One pet, was it? <laughs> no, oh man, I've had a few friends who, it was back when you were living with me, I had a bunch of people over. And so one of these guys had met you before mm, and referred Jesus. to you as, Grace, who is that beautiful Mediterranean boy who opened Holy the door? Fuck. And I was like, who, Ham? Anyways, love you dearly, Ham, but I don't really get it. Anyways, <laughs> so, and then, so this had been kind of the joke for the summer, and we'd been making fun of my buddy for, you know, being so enamored with you. And then you came home, and you pop in, and you go, oh, you know, what's going on? I say, well, why don't you join us? I think we were playing Cards Against Humanity mm. or something. And you turned around. There's this death grip on my arm. And I'm like, what is happening? I look over at another buddy of mine. He goes, who is that a friend of mine who later said that he would change his life for you and i was like why <laughs> anyways so you're you're quite well liked so i thought you went on an accidental date with one of those two and i was like how have i never heard that story if we change this topic <laughs> but anyways so the accidental date that i ended up on uh was oh. <laughs> was in grade nine there was a guy who was, he was in a couple of my classes, but I got to know him through skiing. We were on the same like ski group in the weekends. So we started chatting on the bus and we became friends at school, hanging out. He comes up to me one day and he says, I've got tickets to this variety show and my buddy can't come with me. Do you want the other ticket? <laughs> now, that doesn't sound like a date to me. Only so, in every movie I've ever watched. But anyways, go so ahead. So I said, okay. I mean, it's not exactly a good way to woo someone saying my first choice was not available. Do you want to take the other ticket so I don't have to go alone? I mean, that's True. not exactly yeah. spitting romance, right? No, yeah. so you want to go to Tim's or us? That gets them going every time. <laughs> so I figure, okay, I'll go to this variety show. I, had, I was not, it wasn't even at our school. I don't remember why he had tickets. But anyways, so I say, yeah, I'll go. No problem. He goes, oh, okay, my parents are going to drive me. We'll pick you up. It's like, no problem. He shows up at my door with flowers. Nice. I was mortified. Gentlemen. Oh my God. I did not know what to do. So I like take the flowers, I bring them into the house. What if you were the first choice and they were just playing it cool? It was his best friend who he had invited. Uh -oh. So I'm guessing that was true unless he lied. But anyways, um, so I bring them in and my mom looks at the flowers and looks at me and I have fear in my eyes. Like, what have I signed myself up for? I did not realize this was about <laughs> to happen. And so I get in the car. Both his parents are in there, both like, so pleased their little son's on his first date. And I'm there like mortified. What on earth am I going to do? The parents were involved in this? <laughs> yes. Both parents came to, they didn't stay at the variety show, but they both wanted to, to be them. in the car to drive us to our date unbeknownst to me and then the whole rest of the evening was so awkward because he kept saying things like do you ever have moments where you want to say something to someone so bad but then you look at them and you just forget what it was you wanted to say uh. and i'm like yeah it happens to me all the time I'm such a scatterbrain i totally forget and then i think i'm gonna talk about this and i it was so uncomfortable <laughs> and then yeah. i get dropped off at home and just avoided him for like the next two weeks and i think he realized oh i didn't let her know it was a date and things were really awkward for a long time like, when yeah. tim's cookies were really cheap back in the day i remember i remember well similarly to people making like comments to you just really praising you up i bought like 50 of these cookies because they were ass cheap especially when you had buddies working there right so i think i got like a whole sleeve of cookies for like 10 cents or something like that and i remember i just went over and give them to this missy and she goes you're some good to have around by and that was it <laughs> so it was like the same thing yeah just take your compliment oh. and enjoy it right yeah yeah so that was my story for awkward social situation that i ended up in because i didn't realize i was being asked on a date yeah, I I I I miss that shit all the time. But like now, I just know I'm tight as fuck. So. <laughs> oh, Jesus! And uh, with that, I, I think we'll end this week's episode. Uh, we were your last podcast, and if you like what we're doing here, uh, be sure to subscribe uh, to the podcast feed. Then never miss out on a new episode. If you're watching on YouTube, leave a like, comment, subscribe, share us with your friends. It helps grow the show. And uh, with that, I'm Colton. I'm Josh. I'm Grace. Someone put me in the ground, please. <laughs>
Bless you, and Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll be back with a new episode next week and every week thereafter until our last. Uh, so thank you for watching. See you later. Thank you. Love you. Bye.